Hello everyone, welcome back to this back of step motor motion control series video. This is the second video from this series video. I will discuss what the detailed wiring for the step motor and the encoder for this KL2541, this module. And that is the same idea as the EL7041, that terminal. As we know, for controlling the step motor, basically we will have uh, four wires, A1, A2, B1, B2. Also from the encoder, we will have uh, three wires, A, B, and C. We also need to supply the power to the encoder. Other than the encoder and the step motor, we also need to supply the power to the terminals. Before we go in deeply for this topic, let's quickly reveal what the solution from the back off to control the step motor. If you are using the K-Bus style KL terminals, basically for controlling the step motor, we would have a KL2531 and KL2541. The only difference between them that is a 31 that without the encoder interface. And 2541, it has the encoder. So from this module wiring diagram, you can see from A, B, C, and here, this area, this module supply the interface for connecting the encoder. And the typical encoder where we have a A, B, C, this style, and also we need to supply the power to the encoder. And because this is a K-Bus module, to connect this module, this terminal, to our controller, basically the controller will be the back of controller or a PC, right? So the typical styles we could use BK1120. And in this demonstration, in this series video, I will use BK1120. That is the EtherCAD coupler. This is the interface module. This is the EtherCAD field bus port. And this module supply the K bus. So those modules can be connected on the right side of this interface module. And this port can directly connect to my laptop and using my laptop as a controller. Since the TwinCat 3 has EtherCAD driver, so our laptop can directly connect to this interface. So we can use this interface module, EtherCAD interface module, so we can read the encoder and control the step motor directly using our laptop. And our laptop running as a TwinCat 3 controller. If we are using the EtherCAD coupler eBus module, for example, EL7031 and EL7041, those terminals, that module, that need the eBus. The eBus is a main strain. So to connect this module, we need to use EK1100 EtherCAD coupler. That coupler supply the eBus. So all the terminals with the EL prefix can be connected on the right side of this module. As we can see from the left side and right side, the wiring, this diagram, they are the same. And from the programming and the control wise, KL2541 and EL7041, they are almost the same. The only difference that is the K bus and the E bus. For setting the parameter, they are slightly different. However, for controlling and set up the closed loop for the motion control, they are the same. So that's why in this series video, I will use this KL2541 for the K bus module, especially if you purchase one used module for your testing purpose. This KL K bus module, they are cost effective for you. And through this interface module, they all supply the EtherCAD. So that's why from the control wise, they are the same, almost the same. We supply the power to this terminal and this terminal can supply the power to the step motor. This EL70X7, those terminals can supply the vector control. As we know, when the step motor become very high speed, its torque is very weak. So if your system running at a very low speed or very high speed, you still need to supply the enough torque. Probably you need to consider this step motor terminal with a vector control. Its performance will be almost similar as the solar motor, the low power solar motor. To find out detailed materials from Bicop website, we can browse 3wbicop.com and then find out this directory, product IO, EtherCAD terminals. And for the EL7041, you can search EL7000 Compact Drive Technology EL7041. And for the KL2541, so that directory, that's the bus terminals, KL2000 series, and digital output 
KL2541. That is a step motor terminal and with incremental encoder feedback. And this is a one closed loop terminal. And for the step motor from back off, you can search motion, compact drive, technology, AS, and step motors. For example, in my case, I'm using AS1060. So if I scroll down, I will find AS1060 step motor, five new meter, and it cost five amps. Okay, click this uh, learn more. We can browse the menus and the dimension file. So for example, if I click this uh, menu download, click this uh, technical documents, so I can download the menu step motors. Okay. And keep in mind here, I didn't find any manuals for the encoder menu. So most likely the encoder come with a step motor. We can find a little bit of information from the step motor menu, but there's no dedicated menu for the encoder. So keep in mind this, if you know where we can find out the encoder menu, please let me know. But the basic info from this motor menu, that's enough for the encoder. After all, the encoder, that's very simple. Backup supplied two level encoder. One is the 200 pulses per revolution encoder. One is 1024 pulses per revolution encoder. I'm using the 1024 pulses per revolution encoder, okay? In my case, I'm using the KL2441, this terminal. So I'm going to download the menu, document, download. And from this technical documents, I can download the menu from here. The 31, that is a no encoder feedback. And the 41, that has uh, the encoder feedback. And for the wiring wise, the 2441 is the same as the EL7041. So basically, if you are using the EL7041, you can download the menu from this documentation and the download. So you can click this technical documentations and download the menu from here. Okay. So I'm going to download the menu from here. Click this English menu. Okay. After we download this menu, we can go to 3.8 chapter KL2541. We can see since this module can connect the encoder and also control the step motor. So this module has a two slots here. Comparing with the 2531, we can see because 31, it only supply the PTO to the step motor. It cannot connect the encoder. That's why it only has a one slot here. So we can see A1, A2, B1, B2, and that's it. Okay. So the 41, it can connect the step motor and the encoder here. So we can see the encoder ABC three wires here. And for the step motor, A1, A2. B1, B2. And the detail wherein we can find out the info below. We can scroll down. For the motor wise, keep in mind one thing. Some cases, the step motor you are using, that is the bipole motors. And maybe that is the unipole motors. Keep in mind, look at this wiring here. But basically, when you purchase one step motor, the step motor will show the A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus, or A1, A2, B1, B2, you can connect to those terminals, okay? And keep in mind the power of the stand motor. And don't forget, number four and the number eight, that is the power supply for the stand motor. We need to supply the power to this terminal. Maybe that is a 24 watt, or maybe that is a 48 or 50 DC watt. And for the encoder, we can scroll down. So here we can see the encoder, it has a five pins inside. So ABZ or ABC, we need to connect to ABC here. And keep in mind, the encoder need a power supply. If on the left side, as we discussed, so if your power backline can supply the power from this 24, these two terminals, the wires from the encoder can get the power from these two terminals. However, some cases, if the left side of the module block the power supply, from the left side. So we can individually give the power to the encoder. But keep in mind, the zero voltage, the potential we need to line up. This zero and our power supply zero and this encoder zero power supply, they need to join, they need to connect it together. Make sure our potential is the same potential. Okay, this is the terminal. So let's shift to the motor menu and look at what the motor size is wearing, what the diagram it shows. Okay, this is the website for the back of step motor. 
if I scroll down and click this documentation and download, I can download this AX1000 series step motors menu. Click this download. So this is AX1000 series step motors. Okay. And from the live side, find out the electrical installation, find out the terminals you are using. For example, in this case, I'm using the KL2541 or maybe you are using the EL7041. So we can see they are the same actually because the terminals and definition, they are the same. Okay, I'm using the KL2541X example. From here, we can see from the motor side, it has a four pins from the motor. From the right side, A1, A2, B1, B2. So we have a four wires in this cable, okay? And it has a different color if you purchase from the back of this cable. So that is a brown, white, blue, and black. It only has a four wires, okay? And from the encoder side, this encoder cable has a five pins inside. ABC, there are three signals. So connect to ABC here. And there are also two wires for encoder power. Keep in mind the brown here, that is a zero. And the white, that is 24 watt. Okay, if we scroll down, quickly compare the EL7031 or 2531, this is a, the high pulse only. So we can see it doesn't have the encoder feedback. It only supply four wires to control the stack motor, A1, A2, B1, B2. Okay, this is the difference. And at this 6.3 chapter, it shows this AX1000, this older number. And in my case, I'm using one built-in incremental encoder it mounted already, so that is a 1024 lines encoder. You can also purchase 200 lines encoder. It depends on how accurate you want to guide from the encoder. And also, I would like to explain a little bit more for the KL module. So as we can see from the KL, this module menu, it shows to config this module, we need a software in named KS2000. But actually, at the TwinCast 3 software, our mainstream software that is TwinCast 3, we no longer need this KS2000 software. We only need the TwinCast 3 to config the parameter to write the register for this module. So don't worry, we no longer need this. Quickly review the register from this KL module. So from this register description, so this 5.5.1 register description R0 to R31, the typical register value we need to go through, for example, the R33, that's the setting for the full motor steps. By default, that is a 200, because the motor I'm using that come from the back of, by default, that is a 200 steps per revolution. Basically, that is a 1.8 degree per pulse. Okay, that is a 200 pulses per revolution step motor setting. And this incremental encoder setting, that means per revolution, how many lines, how many pulses from this encoder. Default, this is a 4,000. In our case, that's encoder, that is a 1024. We need to write here. Also, we can find the maximum coil current A and B, and the acceleration threshold, and the coil current for standstill. We need to set something here. But don't worry, I will show how can we set this while, while opening the TwinCat 3 software. Just to keep in mind, we need to set the register value for this module. For the EL7041, they are the same idea. Actually, it is easier to set the parameter because every terminal, they are the one node from the EtherCAD field bus. So we can use the COE, the parameter list, to set the parameter for each node, for each module. For example, if we shift to the EL70, the menu, EL module, we can find out the EL7041 object description and uh, parameterization. So we can find here for the input data, output data, command, object, all those parameters we can set directly from the TwinCat 3 software. It named the COE parameter. It's actually easier than the KMAS module. For example, if we go to the chapter 5.10, we can find a similar parameter right here. For example, for the A1010, so we can find the motor full steps for per revolution. By default, it's still 200. And for the encoder incrementals per revolution, 
by default, that is a zero here. So actually we need to set maybe 200 or maybe 1024. Okay, that's a similar idea. All right, that is a stand motor with the encoder terminals wiring. So basically the main idea for the left side, we will connect the encoder, right side, we will connect the, the stand motor. And the right corner, we need to supply the power to this module. This power will be used to supply the power through the pulses to the stand motor. And keep in mind, the power supply for the encoder, don't forget that, okay? Also, I highly recommend you can print one screenshot or print one page in this menu to explain what the detail meanings from this each indicators. So in case you troubleshoot the system, those indicators are very useful. That is this video. In next video, I will show how can we use the TwinCast 3 and use this BK1120 interface module as an EtherCAD station. And we will connect all those modules together. And I will show how can we use the TwinCast 3 software to scan this station and how can we set the parameter for this module. And we can manually set up the pulses to this module and we can see we can drive this step motor. Also, we can use the scope meter to measure the high pulses from this encoder. We can verify actual pulses from this encoder. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.